Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, What the Bible Says About Skin Color. What the Bible Says About Skin Color. Let us go to Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Notice, we are all one in Christ Jesus. But we've got individuals who like to mess around with words. They like to take their own opinion and put it upon others with regard to skin tone and skin color. This is why the Lord will tell you to come from among certain family members and friends who do this sort of thing. Because they put things in your mind that shouldn't be there. And they can be very influential in who you end up with if you let them. And then that might not be your preference who you're with, but you did it to appease a mother or father. John 7, 24 says, do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Some individuals don't want family members and friends and others to be with a certain skin color just because the appearance. I don't like the way she looks. I know what them babies going to turn out to look like. Song of Solomon 1.5 says, I am very dark, but lovely. O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar or Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. So for some individuals, when they think of people in the Bible, they often think of fair skinned people, but that's because of the paintings that you've seen and the sketches and the images and the white Jesus hung up on someone's wall years ago. But many individuals in the Bible are dark skinned. Acts 17 and 26 says, and he made from one man, every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. So one man creates many men of all sorts of skin tones. Hmm. Acts 10, 34 and 35. So Peter opened his mouth and said, truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. So if the Lord is speaking to you on doing something for someone who happens to be either lighter or darker than you, and there's some individuals around you who object to it, and you know their objection is because of skin tone, there is something very wrong with them and not with you, you see. You do what is right. You do what is right. You do what is right. That's what God wants for us. Revelation 7, 9 says, after this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches and in their hands. Isn't that a sight to behold? Some of us, we saw this sort of thing in various churches where it was everybody. Woo. And I like those sort of churches. I like those more so than the churches where it's just my particular ethnicity. Matter of fact, I start paying closer attention as to why that is. And oftentimes it's because of the community and where people are. Okay. And it's unfortunate that in some of these communities, there is, there's all sorts of financial issues that's going on. And so even in the church, you've got individuals that let's say you come as a guest and you happen to be fair skin, they'll roll out the carpet, assuming that you've got some money. Yeah. 
it goes just far beyond just appearance but also people start looking at what can you give to the establishment what can you give to the group what can you give to my son my daughter i remember one particular individual said where does the father work oh well the father he works here there and everywhere and blah 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 uh -huh. okay and so the son looks upon the father the father doesn't have much and neither does the son out of all the individuals that you could get yourself involved with you decide to go in the direction of a broke and then that relative had filled in the blank as far as skin tone was concerned mm -hmm. you see someone thought this was just about you know racism or color or something no this <laughs> this is far more deeper than the surface and what media puts out there people have all sorts of reasons as to why they want fair skin over dark skin or dark skin over fair skin you know or someone in between first samuel sixteen seven says but the lord said to samuel do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because i've rejected him for the lord sees not as man sees let me stay right there you have your reasons as to why you don't like or won't put up with or be a part of and it could very well have to do with who hurt you or who hurt somebody within the family who is still holding grudges but you see if we're going to walk with the lord the lord sees not as man sees this is what we got to get through our thick skulls for the lord sees not as man sees man looks on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart. I'd rather have a dark affair and in between any day in my circle of a people if their hearts are in the right place. You see? Because I know God is looking at the heart. Matter of fact, in my own family, we are rainbows. <laughs> like we're talking about all sorts of shades, colors identities a lot of stuff you know going on in the family over decades but the lord spoke to the matriarchs and patriarchs said look at the heart and this is why our family was more welcoming than other families you see look at the heart Revelation 5, 9 and 10 says, and they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and by your blood, you ransomed people for God. We're talking about Jesus from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you've made them a kingdom and priests to our God and they shall reign on the earth. For what Jesus did on the cross, how dare we be petty about things like skin color lord jesus genesis 25 and 25 says the first came out red all his body like a hairy cloak so they called his name esau so some folks think in terms of black and white and forget about the red forget about the yellow forget about the brown Matter of fact, some have even been so bold as to say, I don't even want to see any of those people in my family. Wow. And then when they get their ancestry, in ancestry DNA done. Oh, um, well, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You see, some people don't want to deal with the fact that for years a family said that we're pure when in fact that wasn't true. <laughs> There's no one walking on the face of this earth that is pure. That's why this DNA business was so important to some elitists because they wanted to prove some things. And the only thing you got was bad news. <gasps> There's black in my family. <laughs> you see, and for others, it was like, oh, there's black in my family. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you know, it all depended on 
how you were raised, what your influences were, what your personal issues were, were they put in check? <laughs> Daniel ten six. his body was like burl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and the sounds of his words like the sound of a multitude. I don't see where that person is a fair individual. Hmm. You see, but there were some scriptures over the years when I think about, depending on what church I visited that were overlooked or they would speak up to a certain point. And then if you continue to read along, then you say, Oh, this is in reference to a dark skinned person. Oh, so why did they stop? You see, uh huh, and that's always a red flag too. If people are skipping over scriptures, you see that reference red, brown, you know, white, black, yellow, anything like that, right? Uh, there's something going on in the background. They want their congregation to be a certain ethnicity, only attracting a certain ethnicity, and making sure that they're not offending a certain ethnicity in the audience. We don't need to continue to go to churches like that. Sorry, don't support it. Jeremiah 13, 23. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then also you can do good who are accustomed to do evil. You see, you can't, you, you got some individuals who, yeah, they use all sorts of creams and treatments. And, you know, we saw Michael Jackson um, to change their skin, right? Because of their, for some people, health conditions like what his situation was as far as a skin condition goes, I should say, right? But then we got other people who they're just doing it because, well, in order for our for our people to get the best of the best, we had to do some things because they only favor a certain skin tone. This one particular woman, she asked me, she said, is your skin tone like that naturally? What? I never was asked a question like that. She was just admiring my skin so. And I said that, well, yes. She goes, uh, she says, well, where I'm from, and she referred to a country in Africa, she says that they pay a lot of money to get their skin to look like yours. What? But for what reason? Well, they consider that skin to be very beautiful and they want to attract a certain type of man. So they do it. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I tell you, there's blessings and curses in messing around. Okay. With lightening up skin. Huh. And when I say blessings, I'm just saying it lightly. I'm not saying like a godly type of blessing, but like a favor of sorts. Right. But then there's the curses too, because you may be able to fit in one circle, but not in another. And you may be well received in one area because of the skin tone, but not in another. Like right now, my particular skin tone is a minority where I live. And the people who are dominant in my community is not white people. It's dark skinned black people. You got dark skinned black teachers and you got dark skinned um, black uh, doctors and lawyers. I know some people are saying, where you live? <laughs> Come on down to Georgia. Come on down to some of the areas down there in uh, any of the South where it's predominantly black. And you'll see for yourself. You see, but when you're in certain communities where, you know, you grew up with nothing but fair skin, you know, or white, um, you know, it can be a culture shock for you. You see, and some folks will treat you like you are different and no, we don't really trust you too much. So we're going to, you know, feed you out of a long handle spoon just based on your appearance. But I didn't even do anything or say anything. Mm -mm. They're going to paint a picture because they may have had a bad run in with somebody who was light skin, fair skin or whatever. And so now the whole skin color of a ethnicity has to suffer behind that and that's not right it's not and for somebody to call themselves a child of god and yet they act this way mm -mm. somebody needs counseling professional counseling in order to delve deep as to why you act the way you act you see and not to paint this broad stroke on everyone you see and i know it's hard especially when people have done you wrong 
I mean, I've had all, the whole rainbow <laughs> have times where they did me wrong, but I'm not going to sit up there and go, oh, but I don't want to deal with these people, you know, because of this and because of that, because God always raises someone or some group up that does love you and does appreciate you. And they're not forming all sorts of judgments on you, even though you may be doing that on them. Hmm. See, it's a humbling experience. I remember when there were a bunch of people that, hey, they look like me, skin color. OK, but they weren't running over to be my friend. Uh, uh, It was other skin colors that were running over to be my friend, you see, and other identities, too. You see, and other other uh, uh, religions. And I'm sitting up here like <laughs> all these years, you know, you were hyped up your particular skin color, or your particular faith, you see, or your identity was hyped up. And then when I need you most, it's not you who was hyped up that came to my rescue, but it was Lord Jesus, the one that you called that was worldly or heathen. You see, God does that. Why? To humble us, to show us that there are people in this world that he can use in great and mighty ways. And, and, and it's not always who you think. That's going to come to the rescue. I see every now and again, a white person in a sea of black people. And, you know, hey, there's some behaving themselves going on on both sides. Because we got to exist. You see. We got to exist among each other. Because in some cases, that's what it is. Your own won't accept you. Because you don't make as much money. Your own won't accept you because you're not a part of the club. Your own won't accept you because you don't talk and walk like they do. Oh, come on. Some individuals have been blackballed from families because you dated a black man. I can put my hand up and say that I got blackballed in different times in my life by different types of people because this one was too bright or too light or white and this one was too dark and this one looked like or this one acted like somebody from back in the day and so therefore there's a mark. Wow, on that person. You see how petty and ignorant and immature this sort of thing is? And then on top of that, there were those individuals who accepted certain people because the story was, was that, oh, that light skin with that type of hair is going to make good babies. Wow. Can't get along, arguing, having all sorts of attitudes among each other. Mm -hmm. But because that one wanted a certain look, was willing to put up with the cheating, the lying, the creeping and everything else just because I want to have a baby that looks a certain kind of way because she was brainwashed by her mother and her grandmother. You see, some people put up with a whole lot because of skin color. Some folks had a personal fetish for skin color. So you're willing to go the extra mile for that skin color even though you just don't get along. And you got too much heartbreak and upset because of that skin color. But you keep on pressing on because of what this one said, that one said. And because you got your personal little tingling sensation when you get around that particular skin color. That is nothing but the demonic. That is not about the Lord. That is a lust feeling that's driving some individuals. It is a evil spirit that I see. A wicked one. That messes with your flesh and you act on your flesh as opposed to your mind as opposed to your soul i mean some people are in deep there's nothing that we can say to get them out of that either because they're so filled with lust lamentations 5 10 our skin is hot Mm-hmm. Ooh, my skin just gets hot when I'm around that light skin, dark skin, red, yellow, brown. Woo. Uh-huh. Okay, girlfriend. Be careful. Lamentations 510. Our skin is hot as an oven with the burning heat. In this case, a famine. That's what that scripture reference is. So somebody 
you can be in a situation where I got nothing. I got nothing. My body is on fire, not because of lust, not because of demonic anything. I'm just in need. And God raises up somebody who maybe you have a personal prejudice against to help you. You going to say no. Oh yeah, there's some individuals. Mm -mm. If that if that type of person is going to come my way to give me a handout, I will go hungry before I take from that person. Lord Jesus, the hate is deep. The hate is deep. The hate is deep. We got to command demons to be far removed if in fact it is a demonic entity that is governing that person or it could just be a personal issue unresolved needs to be put in place in its place you see lord jesus i'm not taking a hands out i'm not dealing with those people mm -mm. i'll be by myself if i gotta be over there dealing with them type of people my mama told me about them people i can't stand those people mm. Behind closed doors, conversations like that go on every day, every moment of the day. The Lord hears them. And just because of that, that's why the daughter ends up with the guy who <laughs> the father warned her about. And just because of that, that's why the son goes off and he messes around with the whole rainbow. <laughs> Jesus, it happened in the family. And this is why all these different tones are in the family, too. First John 2 11, but whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his ass. Can't see his hands in front of him. I hate my brother. Oh, really? Are you sure you want to do that? You can't be a child of light. Don't you say that. Oh, I'm going to say it. You can't be a child of light. I looked at the scriptures. Hates his brother. He's in darkness. He walks in darkness. He does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his ass. You see in those old movies, especially around Black History Month, all of the hate in those people's ass. Mm -hmm. And then you see generations of foolishness since then. Don't you think that there was a lot of hate that was going on and why some individuals are under a curse of sorts? It doesn't matter how successful they become, education, you know, location, all that good stuff. But then mm, there's something in the bloodline that's off, that's wrong. Health issues upon health issues. I remember somebody said, uh-huh, there's a generation's. That are being impacted because of what fathers and mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers and greats did to so many people. I can't seem to get out of that curse. There were people who put curses upon individuals. And that's why some individuals started running under the blood covering of Jesus and getting into the church and reading the, reading the word. Because they saw, this is just too big for me. This is too much going on in our lineage and I think it has a lot to do with those slaves that great, 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 great had on the plantation. I think a lot of this had to do with, and they, they're putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Some others haven't. They haven't figured it out. And some others, a light bulb is going off as I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. A lot of blood on people's hands. Lots of hate that runs deep with some individuals. And they didn't know where it came from. It came from the great greats. Lord Jesus. And it still manifests itself. Even some of the children are born and you can see the hate in the eyes. They're not even adults yet, but you can hear and you can see it. We don't like those people. Those people are bad. Who told you that? I just know they're bad people. Wow. Don't say that about those people. And that little innocent child grows up to dominate those people. Mm. Curses run deep, don't they? Lamentations 4, 
eight. Now their face is blacker than soot. They are not recognized in the streets. Their skin has shriveled on their bones. It has become as dry as wood. Lord Jesus. When there's a curse of some sort, when God is putting individuals in a trial of, of just great propensity, their health gets the best of them. Even if to the world they look righteous, act righteous, like I said, best location, best opportunity, education, all of that. Job 30, 30, my skin turns black and falls from me and my bones burn with heat. Mm -hmm. Some individuals have even gone, I've heard in the spirit, have gone to say that my skin has turned this way. And I have reason to believe that it's a curse upon the family because of what we said about darker skin. Or I believe my skin is this way because of the hate, the intense hate that the family had towards the lighter skin. You see, these strange things that happen with some individuals and they end up wearing the very color that they hated before they got ill. God's interesting in that way. Curses come in so many different ways. And sure, you know, doctors got their labels and, you know, people will say, well, the reason why you're going through is because of this and that. And that's surface reasoning. But the deeper reasoning beyond the surface can be tied back to how people treated others generationally or even the person who's suffering, how they treated others I can hear in the spirit, somebody says, I don't want those kind of curses. I'm going to just love on some people. I know that's right. <laughs> More stuff dealing with the skin. Job 7, 5, my flesh is clothed with worms and dirt. My skin hardens, then breaks out afresh. Job 2, 4, then Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, all that a man has, he will give for his life. Skin, Lamentations 3, and four, he has made my flesh and my skin waste away. He has broken my bones. Job 19.20, my bones stick to my skin and to my flesh and I've escaped by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> Lots of things related to skin. Revelation 1.15, his feet were like burnished bronze refined in a furnace and his voice was like the roar of many waters. You see... When a person has on the skin of his body a swelling or an eruption or a spot and it turns into a case of leprous disease on the skin of his body, then he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of his sons, the priest. Leviticus 13, 2. That's how they dealt with skin issues back in those days, you see. And God, the doctor of all doctors, he healed people right on the spot. So... When people make a big deal with regard to skin, have I made it have I made it plain that there are those sorts of consequences that take place? Have I made it plain that when people sin or when people are under trial that the skin goes through its share of suffering? You see. God, he loves us. And he looks beyond skin. We cannot be petty like children pointing fingers and ridiculing over someone's skin tone. Whether they are the whitest of white or the blackest of black. Who are we to tell someone, oh, you should get a tan. Or, oh, you, you should consider lightening up a bit. Who are we? God made these people in these skin tones for good reason. And whatever those reasons are, that's not up to us to figure out. We just walk in our earthly suit, if you will, until it's time for us to be called home. That is if some are going to be back at home with the one true God.
They may be in a fiery hell because of the hell that they put upon this earth with all of the things that they said with regard to skin and what they did to skin. Hmm. I thank you, O Heavenly Father, for the skin that we're in. I thank you, O Heavenly Father, for the times that you created an escape, an exit, when there were those who meant evil to come after us as a result of our skin. I thank you, O Heavenly Father, for those who have resisted the temptation to do something to their skin. And I thank you, O Heavenly Father, for what you are doing to bring light upon those individuals who have walked in darkness for so long because of what family members and friends have said about skin. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, O Heavenly Father. I thank you, listener, for what God is doing in your life. Let us not be focused on skin. Let's be about God's business. And for some of you all over the years, I know in the spiritual realm, I picked up that why does this woman not show her face? Why does this woman do message after message and she doesn't do like what other people have done? When this channel was started, I started off showing my face. I started off like everyone else. Okay. You have a little freeze of these different thumbnails and you know, you've got your face on the screen all the time. Um, and over time, the Lord showed me some things about doing that. And so this particular channel, it's not about looking at my skin, <laughs> watching video after video of my skin, because sometimes skin can be a distraction. What we wanted to do was amplify what God's word was saying without the distraction of looking at skin. Every now and again, there's a video that might pop up where you see who I am, but at the end of the day, it is about the great I am that we need to be concerned about and not so much skin. And we also noticed over the years that the public wasn't so interested in what I look like. They were more interested in the audio. And so when we tested face and we tested audio, we found that audio won and face didn't. So... I was grateful for that. Anyway, I thank you, though, for listening and blessings to you.